Well, good Sunday evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. You know, it's great that our Dallas Cowboys are in training camp. I don't know about you, but we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice, but we are so fortunate to actually have something football-wise to talk about. The season of being off is over with. It is now the beginning of the season, and we've got some notes and some things that are happening and a few ideas of what we think is actually going on that I want to share with you. But you know, my man Ron Oliver, he mixed up these beats, and you know I just love them. So I'm going to try and keep on going right on through it because, hey, you know I love the music. Um, I need to double-check the volume here while we're here because, you know, we do all this stuff, of course, live and in full color. Um, one of the notes that we have from training camp today is – uh, Cooper Rush was not practicing. We're talking about practice, not a game now. We're talking about practice. Um, he's actually not practicing, so uh, other guys like Ben Dianucci ended up getting more work. And I believe Ben Dianucci was six out of seven passes, so he was actually looking really good. Uh, Mike McCarthy has said that he has actually had a lot of growth and development and now actually having an off season that he's actually playing really, really well. You'll remember he was very high on Ben Dianucci during the draft, and you know, maybe they're taking him under his, their wings and making him the guy that they think that he can be that will be a quality backup for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, one thing we do have to worry about is um, Jerry Jones was asked about Demarcus Lawrence as well as Cooper Rush, <clears throat> which are both on the pup list right now. Uh, you know, when he expects them to practice, it looks like they're going to be after they get back to Dallas. So we have the Hall of Fame next week. They go back to Oxnard for, um, I think, five more days after that or a week after that. And then they head back to Dallas. So we're looking at, you know, two and a half, three weeks still with Demarcus Lawrence as well as Cooper Rush. It's not something that you really want to see happen, but, you know, they're going to be cautious with these guys because, you know, we need them for the season more so with preseason. But he did say they may be able to play in preseason. So that's actually a good thing. And um, somebody that I don't think we need to worry about too much, I'm happy to say, is one Dak Prescott. And let's take a look real quick because, you know, there's all kinds of clips out there of everybody working out in training camp and stuff. So I just want to show you my quarterback and his footwork because this is key. There's been so many people that have, of course, asking about, you know, how's Dak, how's the ankle and stuff. And Troy Aikman, who was there today, Mike Fisher caught him um, with the whole, you know, I guess five, six, seven minute um, conversation on the Cowboys, the state of the Cowboys and Dak Prescott specifically and saying, you know, he's got pins and everything else that are hold, you know, put together with that ankle. He said the leg may break, but the ankle's not going to be a problem. And, you know, I think it's time for the media to actually start stop talking about the injury so much. So <clears throat> he looks fine to me. I'm not worried about him. He's actually gone on board and said, you know, the expectations are that we will be the best offense in the NFL, which will be tough. Um Interesting thing that happened with me today was when we signed uh, K. Ron Brown. A lot of people end up sending me messages like, "Who's this guy?" You know, uh, you know, I've never heard of him, and he's only played in um, three games, one start. You know, had five tackles, and everybody's going through and saying, "You know, what are we doing, man? You, we're not interested in winning. You know, we're, we're just signing nobodies and stuff." But I think back, um, and I can't wait till next week. I, it hit me today that. Next Wednesday, I pick up the RV, and next Thursday, we head off to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm still in disbelief that all of that's actually going to be happening, but it is. And I was press, you know, uh, fortunate enough to actually be on these interviews with the players. Uh, I mean, excuse me, inductees that are going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I started thinking about what Jimmy Johnson was saying. Um, I want to play the clip and then tell you what I think and how this is relevant to the Cowboys for this year, and it may be that history is trying to repeat itself. Gear up, Gear up and, then and then James Harris. Harris. 
Uh, Jimmy, Johnson, uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first, let me first say congratulations, congratulations on getting on into the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Uh, watching, uh, watching that, that live, live on television, television that raw emotion was just beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, um, I have so I have many so questions, questions for you. For I think about the only way I can get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out and go fishing with you. Fishing <laughs> with you. <laughs> but um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone, having from, gone the from the pinnacle, pinnacle down, to, down the to the depths, depths. What, was what was that like? like? And, the and the second part, second part of this question, question would be, be I played, played football, football at JMU with Charles Haley, Haley and, knowing and knowing the character, the character that, that he is and all, and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, Cowboys. How, were how were you able, able to mold, mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, no, but you know, we had, you know, gone, we had through gone through four straight, four straight seasons, seasons where we played a national, national schedule, schedule and, and been on national, been on national television, television every other every week, week and, and only lost two regular, regular season games. games. And so, so we, had we had a powerhouse football, football team, and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a we great, had great, you know, group, group of talent. talent. And, then and then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons, seasons there at the, at the bottom, bottom of the NFL, NFL at 3 and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. talent. And, and, you know, and obviously there were some older players, players that, that uh, helped, helped us, uh, uh, you know, in winning, winning our Super Bowls. Super Bowls but, but a lot of it had to do with, you know, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach. And he he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane, at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous staff said get rid of him because he's too fat, Nate Newton. We took a, a third-round pick. Uh, 245 pound offensive guard. guard. I asked Tony, I, asked Tony, I said, Can, can you, you convert him to a center? center? He said, I'll, he said, I'll make him into a center. center. So we moved so Stupanowski to, to center. center. And then we, and took, then we a took a seventh round, round pick, pick, Kevin, Kevin Gogan, Gogan, Gogan uh, who, had who had struggled, struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third round pick, Eric Williams, at right tackle. So, so. You know, you know, those, those players, players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, so, you know, the combination, you know, the combination of, of having some having great, great assistant, assistant coaches, coaches and acquiring a lot of, a lot talent, of talent with 51, 51 trades in five, in five years, years, we were able to win that win Super Bowl. Super Bowl. So, so it was a great, great feeling. feeling. Thank, you Thank you very much for that. that. I'll, I'll follow up you, about, about Charles Haley. Haley. Yes. yes. <laughs> He's a character. He's a character. He's a character. He's one of my favorites. You know, Charles and I have developed a great relationship after, After a few, a few rocky, rocky roads, roads uh, there uh, early in his, his career at Dallas, at Dallas. Uh, we, had we had a couple of run-ins, run but, but we really, we got, really together. got together. You know, really, you know, he really came, he came in my office after I had berated him, him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball, ball games. games. And he said, and he said Coach, Coach, he said, said if you will just get on to me one-on-one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, and you I know, said, Charles, Charles I, 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 may I may not always be able to do that, do but I'll try. try. But from that, from that time, time forward, forward, we had a great relationship. And he was a big was part, a big of, part us of us winning the Super Bowls. Bowls. Thank, you Thank you very much. And how about, and how about them Cowboys? Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> I should have trade that. that. <laughs> James, James Harris. Okay, so did you hear what he said about that? He said that literally, you know, we had 51 trades. You know, we took a free agent um, tackle that was overweight, that was let go because he was overweight, and that was Nate Newton, FYI. The Washington football team let that guy go. And I guarantee you at that time when we were signing guys, if we had social media and everything else like we do now, we were saying, why are we signing these bums? So enter the Dallas Cowboys of right now. Right now, you know, they're bringing in K-Ron Brown. They're, they're bringing in uh, Malik Hooker. They're getting – Demontre Kazee. What they're doing is, is they're trying to bring in as many guys. Not all of them are going to be, you know, uh, guys that are going to make the team or team or guys that are going to make you better. But you may end up finding, you know, a player two or player three here. And the way they're going about it now, Kron Brown, they did sign him. I know he's only played in, you know, three games and five tackles and things. Um, 
but they signed him to a two-year deal. I don't know what the amount of money is, but I can guarantee you it'll be cheap. Malik Hooker will be signed probably in about the next two to three days. I don't know why they had to wait five days to get it. He passed his physical. A guy who you know had seven interceptions in uh, you know his career right now. I think it's been you know um, two years plus, you know, or three years plus, um, a couple of games last year. Um, you're bringing in a lot of talent, and for me, I've been going through it in my mind saying that having all of this talent that you have here or having all these guys that are all hungry um, trying to make a name for themselves and they're all young, that this is literally what Jimmy and Jerry did when they built the team of the 90s. You know, they, they drafted. They had lots of draft picks, but they also made lots of trades to bring in more talent. You know, and they made the trades, which is really non-existent as much today as it was then, because there wasn't really free agency. So you didn't have the free agents and the salary cap like you did um, and, the, and the players like you do now. Um, and that's the difference. And they could go through and evaluate. So when you think about them doing those 51 trades, a lot of them didn't do anything. But it's okay because they ended up continuously bringing stuff. If you can hit on 20% of them, then you're going to be way ahead of everybody else. And this is where I look at it and say, okay, I, I feel pretty good about what they're trying to do here. And this may be part of the reckoning of Jerry Jones, who you know, famously uh, messed up with Jerry, I mean, excuse me, with Jimmy, and realizes 26 laters. I you're up, you're up, and then James, James Harris. Harris. Oh, wrong one. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Johnson, Johnson, let me let first say congratulations, say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Sorry, wrong clip. Wrong clip. Sorry, guys. Come to my mind. We had a great run of it. Uh, he's a great coach, and I'm uh, proud to have him as a friend and proud to have had the times that we had. We, we, uh, we just had a great, great experience. Yeah, you know what? I can't wait to go to the Pro Football Hall of Fame next week and know that Jimmy, Jerry, Troy whoo, are all going to be in the same place. That is going to be uh, amazing whoever catches Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones together for the first time uh, this week on Jerry's uh, uh, Jerry's reckoning of the mistake of letting go Jimmy Johnson as he goes to the Hall of Fame. So with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here because, well, kind of made a few mistakes this evening. I think I need to get a little bit of rest because I think I'm a little bit tired. But you, you know how we roll. Yeah, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. That's right. Today, today, and we will we leave you with a. a I, can't I can't do it. Do it. We'll do it we'll live. Do it live. Okay. Okay. We'll do it we'll live. Do it live. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Do it live. Do it live. <laughs> thing thing sucks. sucks. Yeah. Five, four, four three. three. That's tomorrow, That's tomorrow, and that is that it for is us it for today. today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks, Thanks again, again for, for watching. watching. We'll, we'll leave you with Sting, Sting and a cut off his, his new album. album.